Hi, my name is Jerry Brown, and I'm going to show you how to string this harp. This is a smart wood harp, 29 strings, and I'm going to install one string of each size, so you know how to install each size of harp, harp string. Um, first of all, what I would suggest is that you put the harp up on a table so that you can reach easily. And we're going to start with these wound strings. This is a low G string, the very bottom string on the harp. And you can put it through from the inside of the harp. You reach through the back of the harp and put it in the bottom hole. And then you can grab it from the front here. You want to make sure it doesn't uh, push the eyelet out. If the eyelet comes out you just push it back in. Okay now I have that string in. What I would normally do is put all of these wound strings in, all five of them, and have them hanging out like this. And then I put the harp down on the floor so I can easily reach the top like this. And I'll put this string into the top hole, uh, or into the hole of the end tuning pin like that. Okay, so we pull the string up. We're not going to pull all of the slack tight. We want it to... to uh, have some extra excess uh, material loose b below the pin uh, and we will start turning the pin clockwise like this and that winds some of the string up on the tuning pin like this and then I put the string in the groove of this bridge pin and I just tighten it so that it gives me a tone. Don't try to tune it up to pitch right yet. Don't guess at the pitch. Just get it uh, into a low, very low note so that you hear a tone like that. If you tune it too high, it's going to break. So you want to be careful of that. Um, and these wound strings, these first ones, are, uh, are the most expensive strings. So just be a little cautious. And we'll put the rest of the five uh, wound strings on, and then I'll show you how to do the next one. Okay, now I have the uh, first five strings on the harp. And I wanted to mention that once I put them on, I like to clip them short. You know, about a quarter of an inch stub is all you need. So... Uh, these strings are nylon, so they're easy to cut with the scissors. Uh, some harps have uh, steel core strings at the uh, end here, and of course then we'd use a wire cutter. Now I have uh, three, three strings of the next size, and you want to always look at your string chart to make sure you're following uh, the gauges. Uh, we're going to go with 50 thousandths. And I have a clear one first, and then I'll do a blue, and then a clear. So I have three of those uh, to put on. Now you'll find that in your string set, you may have uh, a spare clear one of each size. So you have four of these strings, you're only going to put three of them on. So we'll start by pulling out a, a clear one. I'll set my harp up here. And we're going to poke this time through. We're poking through from the front to the back. And then I grab the end here. And here's where we're going to start using <coughs> our beads, our little plastic beads. So we're going to string a bead onto the string like that. This acts as a washer to uh, hold the knot that we have to tie. So I'm going to tie an overhand knot like this 
keeping the bead inside of it and pull it tight. So I have an overhand knot here like that. And then the bead. And then I can pull that tight against the inside of the soundboard to tighten the knot. And then I'm going to add some uh, CA glue, some super glue. Uh, the cyanoacrylate is what the technical name is. And uh, we buy big bottles like this, but you can use a small tube from the drugstore or hardware store. We just go through a lot of it. So I'm going to just put a little dab of it. It doesn't take very much, half a drop at the most. And what this is going to do is prevent the nylon from untying itself. So nylon is so slippery, this stuff, that it can untie itself under high tension. And that makes it uh, a nuisance, you know, to try to keep your harp in tune if, if the knot keeps slipping. So I pull that and up against the inside of the soundboard and then the other end I'll thread through the next tuning pin here. This string is way longer than it needs to be but I'll get enough so that I have say this much slack below. And then I start turning the pin clockwise and I'm going to guide the wraps the string is going to wrap around the tuning pin. I'm going to guide the wraps toward the wood. I could go either toward the wood or away from the wood when I'm wrapping. But uh, I'm going to start by wrapping toward the wood. And you see I've got, uh, I've started a second uh, revolution of the string around the pin. And I'm going to take that string now and pull it outward as I turn the pin. And I, now I have just crossed the, the string over itself. Kind of like crossing your fingers. Uh, this little detail makes a big difference in securing the string to the tuning pin. Uh, otherwise the string might slip through the tuning pin and so then if if this end is loose or is not secured well the string is going to go out of tune and if the knot isn't secured very well the string is going to go out of tune so it's important to secure both ends the tuning pin and the knot and then when you tune it up it's going to stay uh, fairly well. I mean the, the nylon is going to stretch for quite a while, but it's not <clears throat> it's not going to go out of tune because of a uh, slipping string. It's just going to be settling in. So then you notice how much slack I have, or I mean excess string I have. I just cut it off about a quarter inch from the tuning pin and toss that away. 